On today's video, I'm going to talk about the installation process for our Zappi wall charger, why I decided upon them, and what you can expect to pay. And also hang around to the end because it's actually a bit of a saving for the month of July. G'day and welcome, my name is Chris and I cover from an Australian perspective technologies like electric vehicles. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, it's absolutely free. One of the first things you need to think about when getting a home charger is where you're going to install it. The further away you get from your fuse box, the more expensive it's going to be. So that's your first important consideration. I've heard from installers that some people do it like 10, 20, 30 meters from it and that substantially increases. I'm talking thousands, like thousands of dollars to actually do so because this is a 32 amp line. It's got a massive cable behind it which runs over to the charger. And if you think about the cost of doing that, running it, cabling it, all that, it's actually really gonna to start to add up. So you want it as close as you possibly can to your actual fuse box. Your next consideration is the length of the cord and how you can actually think about charging not only one car, because maybe in your near future, like us, where we're getting our Model Y, you'll have two electric vehicles to charge. So for us, we actually chose that central post. If I was to charge another Tesla in this garage, I'll probably have to reverse the other one because as you can see, this wouldn't quite reach in this situation if this were a Tesla. The next consideration and probably the most important one for us was that we've got solar and a battery and I wanted a system that was able to maximize the benefits of those. To date, we've just been using a 10 amp, then a 15 amp charger, like the mobile connector that comes with your car. But I always had to time that and be very careful with managing that and also the MG ZSEV doesn't have any timers or limits on its charging so we really had to control it quite tightly. And the other option obviously because we are getting the Tesla Model Y was to buy a wall charger and they're one of the cheapest in Australia but that too is just a dumb system. It doesn't know, um, it doesn't actually mix in solar, it can't mix in your battery and sure you can charge any electric vehicle with it right now through the settings menu but that's as good as it gets. And I am aware and I'll do a story on this very soon, there is a cloud based solution but that's been provided by a third party who I don't know nor trust maybe, apologies, nothing against you. but. Uh, also, it's going to be come behind like a bit of a paywall sort of system, that, yeah, a subscription you have to pay for. Uh, and then you've got the responsiveness of the cloud. And whenever I'm thinking about smart home and devices, I'm actually trying to integrate them into our house and not have to run off the cloud. I like to run them locally. And that's why in the end, we chose the Zappi because it can actually blend in solar, it can blend in your battery and it can work with any electric vehicle charger and you get that maximum speed. To get this project started all I needed to do was actually send some photograph and really basic measurements to Evolution Australia. They then actually um, went to the preferred elect electrician who actually does the installations and uh, they brought me back a price. Now originally it was going to be like around a 750-ish dollars, I can't remember the exact amount, um, but then we also didn't have enough space in our, our fuse box on the back bar, whatever it's called, to um, have a, a 32 amp line over there or amp fuse rather. So we had to have this box installed underneath it to make the Zappi work to as fast as capable through a single phase. Come installation day, they arrived early, around 7.30, and the whole process took just a bit over three, three and a half hours and got the opportunity to take a look behind the Tesla gateway. And then they took the fuse box apart. They started running lines to and from where the Zappi was gonna be. They put a back plate on it. They installed the unit on it and they put these CT sensors onto our lines so that Zappi actually understands where the energy is coming from. That is the grid, our Tesla power wall or solar. And now the exciting part, the commissioning of the Zappi wall charger. This is where the electrician actually configures in the back end things around what it's getting fed, uh, what the settings are gonna be as to where it's gonna draw from, the mix and so forth. And he asked me a question which I actually really hadn't thought through until he actually said, here's why you shouldn't use your Tesla Powerwall. And it goes like this. Think about your energy needs and how it works between winter and summer. In summertime, our Powerwall will actually fill up by 12, one o'clock. Then, when the sun goes down, we start to draw power from it during peak electricity times, meaning that if we were to allow the Zappi to quickly pull power 
from it and fill up one of the cars, remember it's only 13.5 kilowatt hours of usable energy for one power wall, it would very quickly take away all the power from the power wall and then you'll be paying a really high premium for your electricity price. We are currently on the EV power shop plan, meaning that between 12 midnight and 4 a.m., we paid just a bit over nine cents per kilowatt hour for our energy. So it makes sense that we actually use the timers in the Zappi to maximize the use of that cheaper electricity. And that meant in the end, I said, yeah, definitely do not configure it to draw down from my power wall. Or rather, it blends with solar, and um, it's got the Eco Plus mode, which I'll talk about in the next video, Eco mode, and well, there's other ones as well. But again, it's a very powerful device, very configurable, and you can use your power wall. But again, I would highly recommend against it, unless you've got three, four, or five of them, which could then obviously run the house and fill your electric vehicle. So how much did it cost us to install the Zappi charger? Essentially, $1,000 for electricals. It could have been actually a bit cheaper if we had space on our board. And then $1,500 for the Zappi. That included all the accessories like the Wi-Fi dongle so that I could actually talk to this through the cloud. Remembering the points I made earlier that the closer you get to your board, the cheaper it's going to be. If you had space there, it would have been cheaper for us again. And this is absolutely an investment. The MG SUV has limited range and if we did a large trip, it could take us 10-15 hours to recuperate the energy and would end up having to leave it at home because of the slow grading charger that came with the car. By having this, we can very quickly fill this up in like literally four to six hours now, which is brilliant. And then soon we begin the Tesla Model Y and having two electric vehicles, we absolutely need this faster charger. And so far, my experience with it has been awesome. I've tried the timer, I've tried the uh, fill by kilowatt hours, uh, I've done the faster charge, I've done the Eco, Eco Plus, you name it, and I'll cover that in the next video. But here's where you can actually save some money. Since my last video, Evolution actually saw it and they said, hey Chris, we loved your video and what you're saying there, and we'd like to offer your viewers the chance to get $100 off anything you purchase from, from them over $8,000. So all you have to do is use this code, Chris100, up to the end of July, and you can get $100 off whatever you buy from them. Remember, it has to be over $1,000. So thank you, Evolution, for this opportunity. I really do appreciate it. So far, this has been a great experience. So in the next video, I'll be talking about the different charge modes of this and how you actually use it, the app, and then later on, like maybe in four or five months when we get into summer, I'll do another one where we're getting a lot of solar and uh, I'll share with you how it's saving us money and the potential time we'll take to actually recuperate that investment we've made. But again, it's an investment. This will now stay with this house. So when we sell the house, like with solar, it actually is, I think, going to increase the value of your property. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing. If you want to see behind the scenes, get news, polls, and things you just don't get here on YouTube, please come over here on Patreon where you can see all this and a lot more from as little as $2.50 per month. And you be good and you be great.